Good afternoon. There's nothing like being ready just in case they call you early. <laughs> it's the beauty of improv. I want to start with a story. You know, I love this time of year. You get together with your friends and family and for holiday parties, and you meet all kinds of people. Well, about three years ago, I went to a party that some friends of mine were having, and I got to meet this lovely woman who said, I think you should try improv. And I said, well, that's nice. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> I go to another party. She's there. <laughs> hey, have you tried that improv thing I told you about? No, I haven't done that just yet, but thank you. OK. Third time's the charm. I saw her for the third time at a third party. She said, have you tried improv? And I said, if I try it, will you quit asking me about it? <laughs> she said, I will. And so I did. So three years ago, I walked into Whole World Theater on Spring Street. Yeah, give it up for Whole World. <laughs> and I tried my hand at improv. Now, some of you may know what improv is. You may have seen things like, whose line is it anyway? You know, we don't have any lines. We don't re rehearse a skit. You stand on stage, and somebody from the audience gives you a suggestion, and you just go with it. Well, that's kind of like life. Now, what I didn't realize is what I would find out in improv was the secret to collaboration. Because I believe collaboration is probably the strongest skill that everybody needs today. Because no progress, no great invention, nothing happens alone. It always takes other people. And so the secret is two little words. Yes and. So let me give you an example of how this works. So we've all been there, right? You're standing there, it's about 11.30, somebody says, you want to go to lunch? And you said, yeah, I'd like to go to lunch. And the conversation in a yes and world sounds like this. Yes, I'd love to go to lunch. And you know, I hear that there's a brand new Italian place right down the street. Yes, and I love trying brand new places, and I heard they have great paninis. Yes, and I love paninis, and oh, then we can have some tiramisu. Yes, and I love dessert, and I love Italians. <laughs> yes, and maybe we could meet some hot guys and find husbands there. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'll go get my purse. Yes, and I'll go get the car. Yes, and I'll meet you out front. Now, unfortunately, life doesn't always sound like that. <laughs> Our conversations that we have every day more often sound a little like this. You want to go to lunch? Yeah? Oh, well, you know, there's this new Italian place down the street. No, I don't want to try anything new. Oh, they've totally blew. This thing's not going anywhere. Okay, well, I don't know. How about sushi? Oh, well, sushi sounds great, but you know, I don't want to drive all the way downtown. Well, we got the yes, but the but negated it. We're still nowhere. Well, okay, how, how about a salad? Well, I guess that'd be okay. You want to go down to the cafeteria? We've lost all this time just talking about it. <laughs> no, I don't want to go to the sneaky cafeteria. I want to leave this joint. Well, that's a great example. Not only did the conversation not go anywhere, neither did they. 
They just stayed in the office. All it would have taken is the art of two little words. Two little words that allow you to connect. What yes and means is to first acknowledge what you heard the person say and then say something that builds onto it. So we learn best by trying. So everybody stand up. Put your stuff down. And I want you to find somebody and shake their hand and then hold on to it. Does everybody have somebody? Okay. I should know better with a group of majority women that I won't be able to keep them quiet. So here's what I want you to do. One person in the pair, raise your hand. Just one. Okay, whoever's got your hand raised, you are now the lead. So what we're going to do is we're going to let you have a yes and conversation. Now, what are we going to talk about? I tell you what, somebody throw me a word that you heard resonate with you sometime today. You know, I keep hearing invent, and invent is the thing. So I think that's perfect. So here's what we're going to do. The person that had their hand raised is going to start a conversation about invention. And you're just going to say whatever you think. And then the second person is going to say what? Yes, yes I love invention. And, and you're going to say something, and then it's going to go back, and the next person is going to say? Perfect. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Go. I just love the energy in this room. We went from that after lunch, I've had a little too much, I might nap, I'm not sure, let's see how this thing's going to go, to I saw some high fives and some oh yes, and I mean, I saw all kinds of energy. Now, how many of you thought this was easy? Okay. How many said, well, it's not that bad, but I might need to practice a little more? You know, because yes and isn't necessarily natural. If it was, we would do it all the time. Instead, we're so focused on our own agenda. So it's a lot of yes, but, yes, and adding nothing, or just plain no. <laughs> and in every business meeting, every personal exchange, every time you have the opportunity to connect with someone, if you can find that just one thing that you can agree with and build on. You never know where that conversation is going to take you. At the end of the day, one of the most powerful things to help you with collaboration, to help you with invention, to help you make a new friend or a new connection is yes and. So my challenge for you, should you choose to accept it, is on the break. Go meet somebody new. Start a conversation. Try to yes and, and see where you go. You may make a new contact, a new friend, a new connection, and better yet, you just may grab onto a whole brand new idea that you didn't have before. Yes, I'm done, and now I'm leaving the stage. <laughs>